Mitch probably didn't tell you, Daryl, that I'm kind of an emotional dude. But. <clears throat> and I was, I, I started to tell the story of you two when I met you first. For, first for you, of course. Uh, the it, it hunts of time with Mitch, but, uh, uh, <clears throat> and I uh, asked, sort of asked, I don't even know how I said it, Mitch, but something like, why would a sweet young lady like you want to marry this big lug? <laughs> but I also said he was my hero. And, uh, and I, did I tell you how he was, why he was my hero? Kinda. It was a river trip, Conwood Third Ward, 10 years ago. And uh, we went down the Snake River and it was really fast. And we hit a, a rapid that threw, threw everybody but us in our raft out into the, into the water and a couple of kids I mean, one adult and one kid got underneath the water, couldn't get out until they passed out. But Mitch had the heroic tenacity to grab some limbs on the side so that our raft could collect all the kids that got thrown out of the boat. Along with a couple of his buddies, uh, Spencer T. and. Uh, James and Rex. Were you there, Rex? And Rex. Uh, anyway, they were my hero from that point on. Even though I was smarter and older than them, they were my heroes. Um, I'm gonna, you know, you called the bishop to to, to marry you, so I'm gonna do a little preaching. You okay with this? Tiny bit. I'm gonna quote a couple scriptures. Uh, but it relates to, I think, what marriage is all about, and also a prophet. Uh, <clears throat> President Hinckley, remember him? He was a long time ago. He said, uh, he, he quoted from the DNC and it says, regarding marriage, if you do this with a pure heart in all faithfulness, you shall be blessed. You shall be blessed in your flocks, in your herds, in your fields, in your homes, and in your family. And then President Hinckley says, no family can have peace. <clears throat> no home can be free from storms of adversity unless the family and the home are built on foundations of morality, fidelity, and mutual respect. When I asked the question, why do you want to marry this big lug? He answered for you. He said, because she respects me. I've been married 48 years. And I've spent every one of those years trying to, working hard to keep that respect. Um, <clears throat> he also quotes, um, from Alba and he says, the words of Christ, if we follow their course, we will carry beyond the veil of sorrow into a far better promised land. He says, it's so easy to stumble. This is by President Hinckley again. It's sometimes so hard to keep our voices low when small things provoke us. May we resolve in our hearts to live the gospel, to be faithful and true to each other, to have the strength to look above small things that could lead to arguments and trouble. We need to be forgiving of one another. Look to God and live. Um, oops, where did I put your, oh, you got it. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to turn the time over to the two of you because you have some, what we're going to call it, vows that you want to 
give to each other. Now I gotta have to get close to you so the mic kind of picks it up. We'll just talk really loud. Yeah, you can do it here. I'm not gonna kiss you. <laughs> Daryl, wait. I promise to love you as you are, as you loved me as I am. I vow to make you happy every day so that I can see that beautiful smile on your face. I will be there for you when you cry, to comfort and protect you, and to bring you a bowl of ice cream that has chocolate in it. I promise to share your pain when people mix up our names thinking I'm Daryl and you're Michelle. <laughs> Shaking, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry for that, by the way. <laughs> I promise. I promise to never leave you on hikes, even though at times my subconscious is telling me that I wish you were hiking faster. <laughs> it's funny if you knew if you know me. I promise to love you forever, or at least until a love friend dies. It's a joke, guys. I vow to get better at vocalizing how much I love you, but I promise to always show you with all the love that I, I promise to always show you with actions the love that I have for you. You are my best friend, and I'm so excited to go hand in hand on this journey together. I remember our very first date. It was a wreck. You took me to get hot chocolate, having no clue the coffee shop we went to was having a karaoke night. It was January, so going outside wasn't an option. Instead, we spent the first hour not being able to hear each other. I remember trying to read your lips and thinking, it's okay, it's not like I'm gonna marry this guy. <laughs> Babe, I'm gonna admit something you will love to hear. I was wrong. And I'm so happy I was. You are everything I needed. You have shown me additional ways to view the world and taught me more about empathy and compassion. You took me on tough hikes and so many fun rides to the car wash. You've annoying laughed at all my bond moments and used more sunscreen than the whole state of Utah. <laughs> You've also kept my feet warm, fed me great sushi, been my biggest hype man, and played more rounds of Battleship than you've ever wanted to play. I actually love that we don't like the same music or flavors of ice cream that we have different views about capturing sunsets on camera, and we don't agree on what the difference is between a trip and a vacation. Because at the end of the day, we are two complete individuals who are choosing to be together, and I will choose you forever. You are the most hardworking, loving, thoughtful, romantic, funny, and attractive man I've ever met. I'm so excited to learn with you, argue with you, and love you forever. Okay, now we're gonna get official. Oh. Okay. There's an actual script I have to follow for the state of Utah. <clears throat> Please take each other by the right hand. <clears throat> you got stuck. smaller hands so I can help a little bit better. <laughs> Denton, Denton Mitchell Brady and Daryl <coughs> Arlene Waite. You have taken one another by the right hand in the token and covenant you will now enter into in the presence of God and these witnesses, your dads. 
Denton Mitchell Brady, do you take Daryl <coughs> Arlene Wade as your lawfully wedded wife and do you of your own free will and choice covenant as her companion and lawfully wedded husband that you will cleave unto her and none else and that you will observe all the laws, covenants, and obligations pertaining to the holy state of matrimony and that you will love, honor, and cherish her as long as you both shall live. I do. Daryl Arlene Waite, do you take Denton Mitchell Brady as your lawfully wedded husband? And do you of your own free will and choice covenant as his companion and lawfully wedded wife that we will cleave unto him and none else and that you will observe all the laws, covenants, and obligations pertaining to the holy state of matrimony, and that you will love, honor, and cherish him as long as you both shall live. I do. By virtue of the legal authority vested in me as, bish as a bishop of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I pronounce you, Denton Mitchell Brady and Daryl Arlene Waite, husband and wife, legally and lawfully wedded, for the period of your mortal lives. <laughs> May God bless your union with joy in your posterity and long a life of happiness together and may he enable you to keep sacred the covenants you made. These blessings I invoke upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may kiss each other as husband and wife.